No more wasted time. This is a new generation of marketing agencies and with it comes a new generation of business owners. Welcome back to a brand new video, guys. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you the best SMA niche in 2020 and moving forward, why it pays a lot of dividends to get in now, and most importantly, how to go about it and make the most out of it. What we're gonna be doing in this video is we're gonna be hopping on my computer right there, and I'm gonna be walking you through a step-by-step -step training on how to make the most out of this niche, how to approach it, and some of the insane benefits that you're gonna reap by jumping on this SMA niche. Now, this video is not gonna be a five, six, seven minute video. As you guys can probably see, it's definitely a bit of a longer video, but look, if you don't have 10 to 15 minutes to sit through this step-by-step -step training, you're gonna waste a lot of time. I'm talking months going down the wrong route and picking the wrong niches that are just not in touch with the current social landscape. So I'm really excited to share this with you guys and uh, let's get right into it. The best SMA niche. Let's get started. And so without further ado, I'm going to get straight into it because the main value of this presentation isn't actually knowing what the niche is, right? It's actually understanding why I picked this niche and also how to approach this niche and get the best returns on your time, energy and uh, money investment uh, and how to actually scale your agency very profitably and very, very fast uh, with this niche. And so drum roll, doo -doo -doo, e e-commerce. Okay. Now here is what we are going to cover in this presentation. The first thing is a niche within a niche, how to get a net over competitors within the e-commerce niche and my unpopular opinion when it comes to the e-commerce niche. Okay. The second thing is outreach. Why outreach in the e-commerce niche is two to three X more effective than other niches. And the final thing is pricing, why you will inevitably get paid more with e-commerce clients. And so we're really excited for this and let's get right into it. First thing is a niche within a niche. Now. What I want you guys to understand is that, and, and my unpopular opinion, but factual, is the fact that e-commerce is not a niche, right? And I hear e-commerce get thrown around a lot as, an, as a niche. And quite frankly, it's just not a niche, right? What we need to understand is that e-commerce is not a niche, it's just a way of doing business. The same way that local business is not a niche, e-commerce and local business is just a way of doing business. It's more of the, the business model uh, than the actual niche, right? For a niche, it's very, very broad. It's way, way too broad, right? And so. What we must do is we must find a sub niche within the e-commerce niche. And guys, you know, when I started my, my social media marketing agency, just a bit of a, a, you know, in my experience, for example, and just a bit of background info uh, on my journey is I picked uh, e-commerce uh, when I started out. Now, there wasn't anyone talking about e-commerce. And quite frankly, I wish I had watched this video when I just started out, because what I did is I jumped into the e-commerce niche and I didn't pick a sub niche. Right? I pretty much just went for every single e-commerce business I could find on the internet. And it was honestly a mess, right? I didn't get any results until I finally found my sub niche and I started becoming an authority in the sub niche, right? And I started getting credibility, right? I started getting social proof and it became just exponentially easier to reach out to clients in those, in those sub niches Tell them that, hey, look, uh, you know, I'm managing this client or these two clients and get clients exponentially easier that way, right? And so that is why it's of extreme value to, to find your sub niche as well as, you know, once you have your sub niche, you can actually get to know the sub niche like the palm of your hand, right? And it's it's honestly just such a blissful uh, feeling when you know your sub niche, you know the competitors in the sub niche, you know what offers work in the sub niche, you know what funnels uh, people are using and work in that sub niche, right? You can speak their language, you know what the current trends are, you know what the the the, the current landscape of that niche looks like, right? You know what the top players are, you know you know how much they sold their businesses for, you know who acquired them, like all this stuff, right? That that just gives you a massive edge over other agencies who just don't understand the, the sub niche just like you do. Okay, so how do we actually go about this process? Now, I want you guys to understand that within e-commerce, there's so many different sub niches, right? We've got tech, apparel, uh, fitness, nutrition, beauty. You can have health, you can have wellness, you can have uh, audio, you can have music. You know, I actually had a, a student and she was actually doing music as a sub niche within e-commerce. Why? Because that was just of extreme passion to her. And the music sub niche, right, within e commerce is still massive. There's still so much opportunity. And that's what I want you guys to keep in mind, right? A lot of people think, and, you know, my students, including uh, when they start with me, they think that if they pick a sub niche, they're going to limit their, uh, you know, they're, they're going to limit their opportunities. And that's just not the case. In fact, you're opening up more opportunities because by going sub niche, you're giving yourself a competitive advantage over other agencies. Okay. And so, these are just five examples that you guys um, can take a look at. But the bottom line is I recommend you guys pick something that you have close affinity to already. For example, if your passion is fitness, then you would take a look at uh, the sub niche 
uh, fitness within the e-commerce uh, landscape, right? The main gist here is that instead of saying, okay, you know, since I like fitness a lot, I'm going to go for gyms. Instead of doing that, you realize that, okay, e-commerce is where it's at right now, especially right now in the, in the current social landscape with what we're currently going through. Um, and, and so you realize that, okay, you know, e-commerce is where it's at right now. There's never been more demand for online shopping. And these are the businesses that are cleaning it right now, but not only right now, but you know, going forward as well, right? Uh, and so instead of going, okay, I, like, I really like fitness, I'm gonna pick gyms. Instead of doing that, you're gonna pick fitness within the e-commerce landscape. Okay. The same way that if you really like food, right, and if you you know if you're really passionate about nutrition, instead of doing restaurants, right, instead of doing restaurants, you do nutrition within the e-commerce landscape. If you really like beverages, or if you really like I don't know drinks, instead of doing um, whatever you know bars or something like that in the local business sphere, instead of doing that, you pick beverages in the e-commerce uh, as an e-commerce shop niche. I really hope you guys understand the the difference between picking uh, a niche that you're passionate about in the low uh, in the local business sphere and picking that same sub niche that you're passionate about in the e-commerce sphere. One is full of potential, especially right now. It's full of opportunity, and I will show you guys why you also get paid more in the e-commerce uh, landscape usually. Uh, and the other one is just not as filled with opportunity, and there's also a bunch of limitations that I will cover in just a second. But yeah, that is what I want you guys to understand that within e-commerce, you, you must pick your sub niche. Now, the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to identify the different categories within your sub niche. For example, if I pick tech, I recognize that there's wearables, right? There's gadgets, there's gaming, there's computing. There is, for example, there is, um, you know, health gadgets, even uh, tech could be, uh, you know, audio devices um, like this, for example, uh, tech could be cameras, for example, filming, uh, I don't know, lights. There, there's so many different categories that you can tap into uh, in the tech sub niche. Now, the main distinction is that the first, the first category, the our, our sub niche, that is us branding ourselves externally as an agency, right? We are in the tech space and we help tech businesses. The other category that, uh, and the reason why you need, you still need to uh, identify the different categories that are available in your sub niche is simply just for you internally to have more clarity and focus when you're doing outreach. And that is one of the things that has helped me tremendously within my sub niche and, and, and for my outreach, right? We don't just, you know, when, when you pick apparel, there's so many, for example, let's just say if you pick apparel, there's so many different categories that you can tap into. You can tap into gym apparel, you can tap into casual apparel, you can tap into, uh, you know, really bespoke apparel. Uh, there's so many different uh, categories. The same with, with fitness. You can tap into, uh, for example, fitness could be even, uh, nutri you know, snacks or, or uh, gym snacks. Uh, fitness could be also uh, gym equipment, uh, home equipment. There's so many different categories, right? And so that, that is what I want you guys to understand. This subsection that we do is simply for our own clarity so that, for example, one week or, you know, for two weeks or for a whole month, you are just reaching out to wearables uh, companies, right? Or to health gadgets, right? And the reason why we want to do that is because, look, if you reach out to a thousand businesses in one single month for health gadgets, what are the type of clients you're going to get? You're probably going to get health gadget clients, right? And by having this uh, least of focus into one category, that gives you leverage because if you land one or two health gadget clients, then you can take that social and that authority that you've uh, gained from signing two health gadget clients, uh, and then you can go on to other health gadget brands and I reach out to them and tell them, hey, you know, I'm managing this clients. Obviously, don't do that if they're very, very close competitors. Okay. But, you know, you can tell them, hey, I'm managing these two clients. Let me help you get the same results that we're getting for them. Right. Uh, and so that, that's why we pick a sub niche because it's going to give us a ton of clarity and focus when it comes to outreach. And not only that, but once we once we sign a, a wearable client uh, by having that laser focus uh, in the wearable category for you know a month, then it's going to be much easier for us to then scale that uh, and sign more wearable clients uh, later down the line. So that is what I recommend you guys do within e-commerce, pick a sub niche. Now, the second thing that I want to talk about is outreach. By the way, in this video, I won't actually cover how to go about picking your sub niche. I've already created this video previously in my channel going over the whole method that I recommend you guys uh, follow. Uh, it's, it's very methodical. It's, it's a very methodical method to go about uh, finding your, your sub niche. But yeah, that, that's really the, the first section, finding your sub niche. The second section, as I said, is outreach. And here are the e-com outreach benefits. The first thing is the worldwide economy. Right? There are no geographical limitations and e-commerce businesses are completely fine with that because that's how they operate their business too. Right, And, and that's the thing about e-commerce. Like the, the business owners that you're speaking to, they're pretty much on the same boat. Like They don't want to be tied to a physical office. Sure, some do. Right, Sure, some do have a physical office. 
but they're pretty much completely remote. They want to have that time, location, freedom. And that's another reason why people make uh, and, and create a, an e-commerce business. And they completely understand that you're remote, right? That you don't have to meet them physically or that there's no need for that physical interaction and that, that physical component, right? Whereas for local business, if you're signing a, I don't know, a restaurant or a, a gym, and bear in mind, guys, before I picked the e-commerce niche, I actually dabbled in the gym niche. I think it was my first month or a month and a half. In that niche, a high percentage of business owners expected that physical touch. Why? Because it's a local business, right? They do not understand business as e-commerce uh, uh, business owners do, right? They they like that, having that, that physical uh, touch, right? They like having that human component with their clients, right? It's not as remote. They're used to that. They built a business literally on that physical component, on that physical touch. So that is why, you know, with local business, it's not as much of a worldwide economy. The second thing is outreach is just way more effective. The common outreach methods that people use are way more effective on e-commerce clients due to the nature of their business, which is completely online, right? I'm talking social media messaging, emails, LinkedIn, Loom video, et cetera, et cetera. Why? Because they land better, because they spend their day online. What is the typical day of an e-commerce uh, business owner? Most likely, they spend a lot of time online, right? Because their business operates completely online. Uh, and they use, on a daily basis, they use social media, they use email, they use LinkedIn, uh, and they're completely fine watching a video online. And a Loom video is probably gonna land better on their inbox or their LinkedIn, right? Whereas, for example, let's just say a restaurant owner, their typical day is a lot about physically being in the restaurant, talking to their customers, right? And having that physical uh, interaction, that physical component. They're not really on LinkedIn. They're not really checking their email much simply because they're running around. They're taking phone calls. They're overlooking their staff, their physical staff. Um, and so that is why it's just way more effective with e-commerce clients. If you're tapping into the typical outreach methods that most people in the SME space tap into, I'm, I'm talking cold messaging, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, now, if you're doing cold calls, that's probably not a good method for e-commerce uh, clients, right? But I think you get the point. And then, uh, and then the final thing is vital to success. And this is a very, very important point that you guys have to understand. Most local businesses can get away without implementing paid ads. It's more of an opportunity, but not a necessity, right? Why? Because a lot of their traffic will come from simply being in the high street, right? In the main street, uh, will simply come from, you know, a referrals will simply come because, you know, this person is located literally, uh, I don't know, uh, you know, 500 meters from this gym. And so they're going to th go to this gym because it's closer to their home, right? A lot of traffic is going to be like that. Whereas for an e-commerce business, their main source of traffic and customers will be on an advertising, not doing it well comes at a very large cost to the growth of the business. And the reason why that is, is because there's absolutely no way if the, you know this business is pretty much just starting out, for example, there's absolutely no way they're gonna get a lot of eyeballs without implementing some sort of online advertising. And, for, and so for them, it is absolutely a necessity. It is vital to their success, having a very well optimized online advertising machine. Okay. And for a lot of them, it's going to be their main source of traffic. And this is particularly true for those businesses who are just getting started. Maybe they're making, you know, 40, 50, 100K even, um, but they're not very well established, right? They're not very well established yet. They don't have that organic traffic. They don't have uh, that maybe retail component. Uh, and so their main source of traffic is going to be online advertising and going into a cold audience with paid ads, whether that's Google ads, SEO, Facebook ads, et cetera, et cetera. So those are the e-com outreach benefits. And the final thing is pricing. Now, here is the pricing bliss. First thing that you guys have to keep in mind is the KPI, the key performance indicator. The KPI that we optimize for is purchase conversion value. At the end of the month, what we look at is not how many leads we brought them, it's literally how much money we have made them. We are responsible for that bottom line. We are responsible for the purchase. We are getting someone who hasn't heard about their brand to purchase a product. And sure, that might be a bit harder than collecting leads, but that is why we have a contractor in place who's an absolute expert at it and has been doing this for ages, right? And so that is, you know, the first thing, our value is very clear at the end of the month. There's no discrepancies and everything is under our control, unlike local business. With local businesses, there can be some discrepancies at the end of the month as to what, what your value is, quite simply because it's not very clear. Yes, they know how many leads you bought them, but the second thing is converting that lead is not under your control. Sure, you can give them some tips on how to convert these people, but at the end of the day, it's really not under your control, right? And their success is really not under your control. And that is one of the things that I don't like about local business. I want to make sure that I die on my sword, okay? And basically what, what that means is if we get them incredible results, that is completely down to us. If we get them really poor results, that is completely down to us. But with local business, you can get them an insane amount of leads, but if they don't convert any because they're just simply not very good at sales or they just simply don't know how to implement the funnel that you put in place for them, that, you know, that's going to reflect on your success and they're simply not going to see the value in your service, right? So that's really the, the, the first thing. The second thing is higher retainers. 
on average, e-com businesses tend to have healthier profit margins around 30%, you consume, uh, which allows them to invest more into revenue generating activities like online advertising. Most local businesses have so many overheads that they need to take care of. I'm talking staff, I'm talking electricity, bills, gas, rent, all these overheads. And so obviously at the end of the month, their profit margins are very slim. They might be already investing into some sort of advertising, uh, maybe billboards or, or, or something like that. It doesn't actually have clear returns, but it's still cutting into their marketing budget. So that's really the second thing. And the final thing is ROAS, uh, percentage of ROAS or profit. Okay. This is where it really gets fun with pricing for e-com businesses because you can add incentives on top of the service fee. And th these incentives are usually a win-win for clients and agencies. For clients, because you have skin in the game and they like the fact that like, you know, if you're really confident about dropping your service fee because you know you're going to kill it for them on the percentage of ROAS, then they're more than happy to do that because they're going to be making a lot of money when you're making a lot of money, right? And so that's, you know, that's for clients. And for agencies, it's pretty blissful because the decision making for the client is much easier, right? So you can sign them on for much easier because it's easier for them to see the value. Uh, and also at the end of the month, you can have a big pile of cash that is, is not just your service fee, but it's just coming from your good performance. And the final thing is you can get to a point with your agency where most of the money you generate comes from incentives. And that's kind of where my agency stands right now, simply because I know that I have a very, very good team in place and we can get them very, very good results. And so most of my agency clients right now are under a service fee plus a percentage of ROAS. So guys, that is that for our presentation. Really hope you enjoyed this. I really hope you guys can see why e-commerce has so much potential, right? If you're already doing and you're getting really good results with a niche, just stick to that, okay? Don't jump into e-commerce, I would, I would recommend. But if you're looking for something more, if you're not really getting results with your uh, with a local business uh, a niche, or you're in the situation where most of the local businesses that you would reach out to are in lockdown, then the e-commerce niche is something that you can certainly look into and consider if you enjoyed this video, leave down below any questions, any comments you may have on this video. If you haven't subbed to my YouTube channel, there's so much content coming out on entrepreneurship and SMA with a 360 approach to sales, outreach, and e-commerce. Lastly, if you haven't checked out my free private mentorship community on Facebook, The Client Closers, it's an incredible community full of like-minded people looking to scale their agency and level up in life. So if you want to apply, go ahead and check out the link in the description. And as always, guys, hope everything's going well in your agency journey, and I'll speak to you in the next one. Peace.